Hi folks, I'm Rick from the Luminary Shop. This is where I spend a lot of my time restoring and repairing carriage lamps from the 1800s. This is the final video in a series on restoring a pair of Molbacher lamps from Paris. Now these lamps were found on a European handsome cab and they were well suited for that purpose. The cab that they were on is undergoing a full complete restoration and isn't available for pictures at this time. However, this picture is a very good example and very similar to the handsome cab that these lamps were actually on. From the picture you can get a good idea of how a handsome cab is made and used. A handsome cab was a city vehicle that functioned as a taxi. It would carry one or two passengers and they could get into the seat and close the doors in front of their legs and shut windows or curtains at the top depending on the weather. A speaking tube was located on the back wall of the cab so that the passengers could communicate with the coachman or whip as he was called. The coachman sat on a small seat cantilevered high off the back of the cab the lines to the horse ran over the top. A single horse pulled the cab and bore the weight of it through fixed shafts. Ideally, the weight of the entire setup was balanced in such a way as to put a comfortable load on the horse, enough to give it traction to pull the whole cab, but not so much as to make it too heavy a burden. So this is where I left off in the last video. I need to spin a new brass band on this head part and I'll need to spin a couple of new caps for the top finials but we'll get to that later on. I'm shaping this chuck so that I can put a small cone in the center of the brass blank that I'm going to use to put over this steel lamp part. Now I'm going to cut this chuck down in order to support the steel chimney part that I'm actually going to be spinning the brass to. The tool rest is way too far away from the workpiece. It's a really good way to get hit in the chin by the handle of your cutting tool. This is a much safer position for the tool rest.
the old part that I'm going to spin this brass to is not exactly round. You can see the wobble in the way it's mounted and also hear it in the tool and see the tool jumping a bit. So for ease of working, I've cut the speed of the lathe back to about 460 RPM. It's the slowest that I can run this lathe the way it's currently set up. The video is running at real-time speed at this portion. The brass is starting to harden and won't spin well, so I'm going to have to take it off and anneal it before I can go any further. By heating the brass to a dull red and allowing it to air cool, it will soften it to where I can work it again. I stopped the heating at various stages in the process in order to allow the heat to equalize through the piece. It serves to lessen the distortion and warping of the piece. I'm spinning the brass down tightly onto that steel part, especially at the outer circumference where the brass will remain and form the decorative polished brass band on the finished lamp. Here I'm cutting away the excess brass and leaving just the band that I want to be on the finished lamp. I'll polish off the discoloration from the annealing process, leaving just a nice bright polished brass band. I'm going to attempt to remove the dents from the top portion of this finial. Being only partly successful, I'm going to reassemble these finials back onto the top and figure out a different way to cover up those dents.
The brass is paper thin, oil canning under the pressure of my thumb. I'll go ahead and spin new caps to put on top of this and cover up that damage. I'm going to repurpose this chuck that I made for making a particular style and size of candle cap. It's fashioned of hard maple, which is a great material for making spinning chucks. When a blank doesn't have a centering hole, it's very important to get it well centered on the lathe so that it doesn't get thrown out due to centrifugal force. The finished piece is deeper than it needs to be, so I'll be able to cut off that fluted edge at the bottom in order to use it. And I'll make another piece to use on the other head. I'm going to run the planishing tool over the outer end in order to take out any wrinkles or ridges.
Now that all the repairs are done, I'll go ahead and reassemble the heads to the lamps and go through the painting process. Now I know most of you are not particularly interested in watching all the details that go into finishing and painting a pair of carriage lamps. And so I'm not going to do that in this video. And those of you that really wish to see that will be glad to know that I have a couple of pairs of lamps in the shop that are going to require nothing but refinishing. And as I have time, I'll go ahead and do a video on that and show as much of that detail as I can. In the meantime, if you do want to see all those details right now, I recommend my video, Brewster Lamp Restoration Final Touch. The design of the interior of these lamps really emphasizes one candle power. <laughs> 